let me field another question to you then. Um, so there are some quite tricky questions coming in. Um, why does the SAG not hold WFP to account? Oh, there you are. Hello. Lovely to meet you and see you. Very nice to see I, you. I restart the camera again. <laughs> good, good. Um, okay, so I'm sorry to ask you a tricky question now that you've joined us, but um, why does the SAG not hold WFP to account for running the log logistics cluster more inclusively? This is a good question. Fabrice <laughs> or someone of the others who want to answer? Uh, I, I, I'm trying to understand the deep meaning of this question, but uh, uh, WFP will not be accountable for, for not running the logistics cluster inclusively. Actually, uh, there is a SAG as well in order to, to, to implement this, to develop, to implement the strategy. Uh, we are preparing the meeting all together with WFP and actually more with the global cell than with WFP itself. So uh, I, I would say that uh, WFP is not to be held accountable for that. Uh, actually, the, the, the SAG is or the, the, the global partner community for the logistic cluster, but not WFP itself. Huh? Yeah, but Fabrice, maybe we hand over also this question to Alex. Alex, as a representative of WFP of the, of the lead agency, you are still there? Alex is not there at the moment. Maybe okay. um, come back to him if he can join in a minute. Um, so uh, there's also a question about the finances and perhaps um, Atali or Bruno might uh, care to answer this one. Um, why isn't there more transparency on the financials of the logistics cluster separate from WFP finances? Hi, Anya, just checking if I've logged on okay yeah, yes okay. i can see you fine i think again as fabrice says it'd be interesting to understand a bit more the exact nature of the question one thing we try to do at all of the glms is provide a high level overview of the financial status of the logistics cluster operations both an overview of the ones in the field and the global initiatives we've got that session later on today if my memory is not failing me and I think at the end of that we can also answer up for people to feedback on what specific elements they would like to see more of whether that be from the analytical side or whether more specifically connected to certain projects and operations or, or maybe um, if somebody wants we, we can take that question on the finance one or if the individual that submitted the question wants to follow up on it now very happy to take that Great, thank you, Athli. And there's another question which has um, got a couple of votes on it. Um, someone wants to know more about how SAG is planning to communicate the voices of local entities. Uh, actually, yeah, this is definitely something we need to improve. Uh, and to me, that's, that should be part of the, that should be fully part of the strategy of the logistics cluster. So. We need to, to, work, to work on that, but for instance, uh, this, the way the global meetings are held uh, this last uh, two times, that, that means uh, this meeting and the last meeting were really more open to uh, local and international entities, and it was not uh, stuck to the 60 usual suspects we see at the meeting. So for me, that's a way to open the voice for the, for the local entities. That's the first step, but uh, we'll be really happy to discuss that during this meeting. Uh, if these local entities uh, want to raise their voice during this meeting, yeah, of course, we are, we are here to talk about it as well. Of course, yeah, we need to carry on, Theo. And as well, we are open and therefore uh, to be a voice for them, that means they can write always an email to the, to the SEC and, and we, we look into it, what they want and how we can give them a voice on that. And you saw in the statistic, it was in the last, since the last GLM, we received zero emails and we are still open to, to receive these emails and, and to respond on these things. I think we'll have to find the email address and put it up on a slide or in, or in the chat somewhere so that people can be reminded of it so they can perhaps send you the first email of this year, perhaps. <laughs> um, I, I have a question for you. Um, so um, 
every year brings new and additional challenges and um, somehow the risk is that we actually forget to look into the distance because we're so busy focusing on on, on the job now um, so what do you think the role of the um, GLM is going to be in providing the space we, we need to exchange those thoughts about strategic thinking? Theo, go on, one of you. Fabrice, you, me? Go ahead, Joe. Um, Fabrice, go on. I'm choosing you. Sorry, then can you repeat the question, please? Yes, okay. So it's just that we're so busy um, doing our work day to day. Um, so what what do you think the GLM, this meeting, will do and provide the space that we need to exchange views for strategic thinking for the future? Um, I think we should focus on the on the post COVID for sure. How how can, how we'll deal with the back to back to normal uh, things not being normal anymore. We we all know about it. Uh, as already said, we we need to discuss as well on the on the definition of logistics. Does the logistics cluster fulfill all the requirements for all the partners' organizations, both local and international? Uh, do we do we still want to focus only or mostly on supply chain, or do we want to deal as well um, with procurement, with fleet, with premises, all the logistics, other uh, areas we, uh, in order to fulfill the needs of the partners? Because maybe, and especially uh, local local partners, they will have less interest in the global supply ch supply chain than local supply chain, uh, and the same for procurement and so on. So for me, that's one of the topics, or that's. The major topic that needs to be discussed: What future do we want? Do we want to the logistics cluster in terms of, let's say, mandate? It's a future mandate, and who who is it? Who decides that? Hey, the community, of course. The community will decide, and how how will that be discussed? <laughs> Hopefully, during the the open session, we'll have this uh, this uh, few days. <laughs> Absolutely, um, Fabrice. Do you have any thoughts about how we can utilize this precious two or three days to think about the strategy for the future? Uh, hopefully by having an active participation of all the, of the particip participants being there. Uh, uh, I, know it's, I know it's not easy to, to take the microphone and to speak in front of 212 people, uh, but we should use the mentee, we should use the, the chat box, uh, anything so that everyone has the chance to to raise his voice, to to give his point of view on the different topic we're going to talk about. Okay, and Fabrice, do you have it? Um, not Fabrice, sorry, Theo, do you have any um, points to to make there? Yes, as well. Also, um, this is the this is the audience where we discuss all the strategic uh, things what we what we think and this is what we what we also discussed in uh, before that we uh, try to build up some working groups and building and working on this strategy and on this strategy for the future and uh, every organization is welcome to work on this with uh, with us and with uh, with all the the others that we have yeah a strategy and the strategy will be endorsed by the GLM so um, I, I've, we're, we're taking questions in Menti. If you have any more, do, do send them in. But if you would like to actually voice a question in this little conversation now, you can put your hand up and um, we'll unmute you and you'll be able to speak. So if anyone wants to join in, you're most welcome because this is a really great platform for all of us to collaborate, to brainstorm, to come up with ideas. Let's not just leave it up to Fabrice and Theo to do all the answering. I'd love to hear what you have to say and, and your opinions as well. Um, I just wanted to um, ask another question really, and that's about, um, uh, the logistics cluster being funded again it's a question about funding I don't know if you two are comfortable or whether Atlee or Bruno would like to join in um, and it's funded through public donor resources um, and partners are the main advocates towards obtaining that funding um, so 
how do you think the meeting can show uh, transparency and accountability of that received funding? Uh, Theo, do you, do you have an opinion on that or would you like to bring Atelier or Bruno in? Of course, Bruno always or Atelier heavily welcome. They are part. They are part of all our discussions, and this is a, a, a good uh, opportunity to have to hear them as well. Okay, Atelier Bruno, do you have a, an opinion on that? Well, maybe I'll kick off and then hand over. I mean, one of the um, elements of the GLM is that it gives an opportunity to share with everybody the progress that has been made with the activities, for example, the global initiatives and the global um, activities and also what's happening in the country office level. So part of the purpose of the GLM is about making sure that everybody is aware of what is being done for that generous contribution by the donors. So hopefully we manage to at least provide a, a, a bit of an insight into that, even though the time is fairly limited, but we do try to make sure that we update everybody on that. And as I mentioned, we've got uh, throughout the course of the next few days, a few little sound bites on some of those global initiatives and projects. And we also have some um, great insights from the field operations as well. So that's one way in which we hope to give uh, a little bit more transparency about where the donor funding ends up by being able to inform people about that during the course of the meeting. But of course, connected to that is that we really do, I mean, I know we're all getting used to the technology and the yellow hands and all that stuff, but I mean, we really do want to make sure this is an opportunity for people to come out with any difficult questions or easy questions during the course of the meeting so we can either answer on the moment or come back to them later on if people have any particular issues they'd like to follow up on. Bruno, anything you want to add on your side? Not necessarily sure I can add anything smart on that, uh, but maybe the GLM is, is not only about the activities of the Global Logistics Cluster support team. I think the GLM is about the activities of the entire humanitarian sector as such. Uh, and if there are any initiatives uh, which, which partners are doing uh, or are seeking endorsement for, the GLM is a perfect platform of sharing exactly that, looking for, account for accountability and endorsement on that. I think we can all agree that the challenges uh, in, in supply chain and humanitarian logistics uh, largely surpass one single entity. Uh, and, and it's only by, by sharing, avoiding duplication, uh, uh, making sure that we are working complementary, that we're getting uh, step by step forward. And I think the GLM is also very much about that, about providing that platform and saying, are we agreeing that this is the challenge for tomorrow? Is this a potential pathway into finding solutions to these challenges of tomorrow uh, and are we agreeing that x y or z uh, is already engaging uh, and taking some leadership role in obtaining those results so i think the glm is uh, uh, complementary to what atlee was saying uh, uh, very much about looking forward as an entire community of partners and sharing on that and yeah Thank you very much, Bruno. And I think uh, Mary Jeliti and uh, Didio Merx are online too. So um, please do join in um, the conversation. Some more questions coming in here. And just before I ask that question, um, everybody in the chat is the SAG email. So um, I challenge you to send the first email to uh, sag uh, logs at logcluster.org. Um, so do, do, do send an email, um, you'll fulfill their dearest wishes. Uh, hello, welcome Mary, nice to see you. Uh, and Didier, Hi. do switch your camera on as well. Um, Mary, as, you're, as you're, you've appeared, um, let me just ask you a question and I can um, send it round to everybody else. Is there a place, um, if one place is granted um, for IFRC, ICRC, how will that be facilitated, meaning um, how the voting system will work for that one place? Does that make sense? So uh, if one place is granted for IFRC, how will that be facilitated, meaning how will the voting system work for that one place? Um, I mean, this is, this is uh, something that we're going to discuss in a bit more detail tomorrow. Um, we're going to have a whole session, well not a whole session, it's not a long session, uh, but we're going to have a talk about this tomorrow. Um, so I think the short version of this answer is 
there's a couple of different options really and it's for us to decide how we want that to work okay that's a very short answer thank you and so we shall watch tomorrow and, and uh, hopefully hopefully discuss it and another question that's um come in um and it's about partners um and it's a what how does uh the sag think about the participation of partners like Beoforce fleet forum and atlas in the global meetings um i think yeah, it's very important that we get lots of different viewpoints um in all of our work i think you know it it, it should be hopefully uh, a foregone conclusion that, that diversity builds strength and diversity of viewpoint means that you're getting all the right perspectives to come to the right outcome. Um, so I think it's, it's it's really crucial that we hear from other people and we're not just talking to ourselves in our echo chamber. Um, and there, there have been a lot of discussions uh, in the open sessions and in the SAG about, um, because I think as, as most of you will be aware, we don't have a quote unquote membership for the logistics cluster as it stands and so there have been lots of discussions about what what does that mean to be a part of the uh to be a part of the cluster what does it mean to be a member to be a partner to be a participant there's lots of sort of different um definitions and viewpoints um and again that's something that uh, is tied in with a lot of other bits and pieces it's tied in with the, the idea that we want to get more um, national entities involved, um, we want to get more a broader reach um, versus the idea of um, practicality. If you've got 500 members, um, you how do you make decisions and how do you move forward and how do you action things? So th this is kind of balance between the two wanting to get further out there and deeper into the field, uh, but still wanting to be effective. I think this is probably, um, so the more the merrier in one sense, uh, but then how do we manage it in the other? And then how do you think, um, what's the best way of getting uh, other entities such as national entities involved? Well, this is the, one of the things that we need to, to discuss is, is, is how, because of course, in this, you know, in the, in the era that we're in now with online conferences, of course, it is very easy for people to, well, not necessarily very easy, but it's easier. People don't have to buy a plane ticket or pay for a hotel to come to the conference. Um, but there's, you know, people, we're all time poor. And I know that national entities more, probably more so than others. Uh, it's, it, people are under pressure to, to implement programs every day. Uh, and they don't necessarily have a whole week to sit in front of their computer, uh, you know. Um, and so there's, there's definitely needs to be lots of conversations about what's the best way to do that. And I think, you know, um, those conversations don't necessarily need to happen. Um, or I, My voice doesn't need to be the loudest voice in the room. It needs to be the people who we want to join in and they need to say, how, how is the best way to, to help them join, I think. Yes, and, and, and talking about diversity on that theme of including more voices, um, what about, uh, someone has said, would it be an option to include a local or a national NGO, again, uh, from one of the larger cluster operations as part of the SAG? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Exactly as February said, every single person uh, or organisation uh, is, is, is able to put forward a candidate for the SAG. There's no prerequisite. Uh, if you fit into one of the categories, if you're a non-governmental organization or a governmental organization, um, you can put yourself forward and you answer the questions and people will vote on your merits. It's, it's hopefully, uh, you know, it is a, a meritocracy and um, there's, there should be no barrier to somebody putting themselves forward if they believe they can do the job. Okay, that, that's, that's good to know. And I can, I can see, um, I can see uh, Teo nodding away there. So perhaps uh, you, you'd like to add something, Teo? Would you like to? No, this is what in? this is what I said already. Uh, that uh, everybody can be elected to the SEC, and this is what what, uh, what I said before uh, in the presentation. And therefore, 
the organizations are welcome to uh, put forward a candidate. That's it. How, so will, how, how do they fit in, you know, what do they need to do to, to fit that category to be able to be electable? Um, I, think, I believe that this time around there's a series of questions that the candidates need to answer is they need to give a presentation. Um, the other thing is that they'll need to be prepared to give their time to the SAG. And that's more or less it. Um, you know, if they believe that they, as an organization and as a person, have um, the skills and the willingness to join in these conversations, um, then there's nothing more really. Um, I think the other thing to remember is that you're not, um, you know, those of you who know Goal will know that Goal is not, it's not the largest NGO in the world, we're 13 or 14 countries. And so it's not necessarily about how big you are. Um, it's, it's about, because you're, it's not about the organization you're part of. Once you're on the SAG, you're representing the whole of the partner community, not just your organization. Um, so, you, you know, I suppose one, one of the prerequisites might be just a feeling that you have an understanding of the, the general environment and context of the logistics cluster and humanitarian operations, I think is probably the only prerequisite really. So I'd be interested to know, uh, Mary, how much time does it actually involve, you know, in, in a, in, because you have a day job as well. So what are the demands? Um, like a lot of things, it varies. Uh, sometimes it could be just the one monthly call, that's one hour a month, which is, is pretty much easy for everyone. And then other times, I think during the early days of COVID, we were having a call a week or more with it, guys, I can't remember. Um, so, and it might be to, you know, obviously when we're in full strategy implementation flow, then there might be following up with working groups and finding out um, how they're doing. But so, <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a comment that came in saying perhaps um, you could sort of have a someone coming in where they don't have to spend so much time it's disappeared from my screen but someone did suggest you perhaps change the way uh the, the uh, sag works that you could have someone who's perhaps a, a part-time member I'm not sure if that's that's possible maybe i misread it um another interesting one here uh cluster coordinators rotate rather often um besides most people attending cluster meetings won't be in country two years later um, how does the SAG consider these challenges to improve longer term goals? Um, actually, that's, that's an issue we, we can see uh, as well inside our organization, having that turnover of staff. Uh, and uh, from, from, from an organization perspective, it's always um, a challenge to, to, um, to spread the message about the mandates, uh, the presence of the logistics cluster in a country we are working in. And uh, we, we, it's, it's, uh, it's fully part of the training we provide to our staff saying that there is a logistics cluster uh, in the country you are going to work in and, uh, and we, we need to train about the mandate, about the activities. We need to improve the participation of our colleagues uh, inside the logistics clusters. Uh, unfortunately, in the humanitarian sector, the turnover will always be uh, be huge. But uh, there is a global cell in Rome uh, who is in charge of operation, who is following as well the strategy implementation plan. So there is a global guidance given to all uh, the clusters locally. So we'll not lose the, the core message of the logistics cluster, but the turnover uh, locally, it's a matter of uh, internal organization training, I would say. Uh, that's uh, that's our main challenge for that. So we need to spread the messages. We need to, uh, I don't know, as an example, we have posters uh, of the logistics clusters activity that we try to try to provide uh, to our team in the country. We'll monitor the participation of the of the colleagues to the to the local level uh, cluster coordination meetings and so on. So that's, that's the, the best way we can do in order to have a, a clean run of, of the logistic clusters activities. Okay, thank you. And um, just one question that's come into the chat. Um, how does voting work and who will vote? Are you able to answer that? 
on the voting or perhaps Mary may be able to answer that. Um, I'm actually might, I'm just looking to, to Anthony and Bruno because the voting process, the technicality of the voting uh, is going to be run by those guys. So Bruno, do you want to perhaps jump in there? Yeah. So the, 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 the voting is restricted to one representative per organization or organizational family, as a lot of the uh, partners are in um, decentralized structures. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, this is trying to have a parity between, as Mary was saying, uh, having a parity between the larger organizations and the smaller organizations. Um, normally, voting is done by ballot, uh, uh, which is the nice old fashioned way. Uh, however, that's not going to work or there's going to be a lot of pigeons flying around. So on this occasion, we're going to try to do it on a digital way. Uh, again, assuring that there's one vote uh, per representative uh, on, on, on the organization. The voting on this occasion will take place on Wednesday. Uh, and all the candidates uh, running for the strategic advisory group elec uh, um, election have indicated upon registration uh, whether they were willing to, to run for election on the strategic advisory group uh, and have been added to the voting system so far. Uh, of course, we still have a bit of flexibility. If other colleagues would like to join in, um, and please reach out uh, as soon as possible so that we can then also brief you on that. Is that answering the question, Anja, or did I uh, I think it? so. Yes, I hope, hopefully it is. Um, it was actually sent in from Nikita, but so uh, hopefully you answered her question. And I can see we've got Susan from the SAG committee. So welcome. Uh, I can see you now. Hi. Um, so um, here's an interesting question. In regards to SAG participation, diversity is being invited to the dance. In Inclusion being asked to dance. Do local like organisations know if there is a dance? <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure. I, I understand further question, but I, I, I'm making an assumption we're talking about gender diversity, uh, and which is a hot topic for many. Um, I, is that the question asking, or are they asking? Well, I, about I think it's. I think it's not just about gender diversity. It's also perhaps about diversity of membership and and, and organisations. I think it's suggesting that song. people don't even know the SAG exists. Um, so you know, yeah. you can answer both actually if you I, want. Yeah, it's a hot topic for all of us. Yes. Um, I, well, we do. Th there is diversity. I mean, we, we open up the offer of the SARG at all the partner meetings. You know, it's very clear what the, the, the TOR, for example, is for the SARG and who can apply. Um, yes, we have limited numbers for certain areas because what we don't want is it all to be representative of one group. So within the SARG, we do have a representation of large NGOs. We have um, you know, governments and donors. So we try to make that as diverse as we can within the numbers that we have. Um, and again, you know, in, in the NGO seats, the three that are in the NGO seats are very diverse. Goal is very diverse to, to what Save the Children does. So I think we do where possible and we allow for that diversity. Um, of course, with all of the representation on the SARG, it is about people volunteering to put, as Mary said earlier, the time and effort into being the SARG and actually being uh, representative of the partners. We might be a small group, but we're not representing our own agencies. We are representatives of the other partners. And I think that's key to note. It's not my opinion with Save the Children. I am there to represent the groups that I, uh, I'm the focal point for. So we keep diversity that way. Um, we are gender diverse. I think we have a great gender diversity within the SARC. Um, so hopefully that answers the question that we're as diverse as we possibly can, given the fact that it is voluntary and people can apply. Uh, and then the voting system is based fairly on the number of votes based on the, the partners' thoughts on who can best represent them at those SARG meetings. Okay, and uh, another question just come in. Um, so how does the SAG interact with other clusters and sectors regularly? Um, I think you'd have seen that more recently with uh, COVID-19, um, because obviously linking in with the health and nutrition clusters. It, I guess really I should probably ask Bruno more about this is, is how he links with the clusters. It's not a direct link because it wouldn't necessarily need to be a direct link. We follow the same cluster process um, as any other cluster group. So we don't de necessarily direct link with them directly because there's not requirement to. Um, but maybe perhaps at the more strategic level, you know, between WFP as the 
body, the, the central body for this linking in, there is probably a much a closer link between the two, the cluster leads. I don't know, Bruno, if you want to come in there. Intercluster coordination group. Yeah. Sorry, Alfie, there you are. Did oh, no, the... sorry. Hello, Sue. Morning. Um, I was going to say, Sue, while we don't have that connection between the strategic advisory group of other global clusters, because actually they have a variety of approaches within the different global clusters. We have the link at the country level, of course, between in the inter-cluster coordination group in country, and we also have a linkage between the global clusters in the global cluster coordinator group. Try not to stumble on yet another abbreviation where you have um, myself and my counterparts from the other clusters coming together once a month or more often. So we don't have a direct um, inter-SAG coordination group, if I could call it that, but we do have the linkage between the clusters at those different levels in country with ICCG and at a more global level at the GCCG. I'll try not to throw any more acronyms in there, sorry. That, that's, um, oh, sorry, I, I get thrown by acronyms, but I think I know what you mean, Ashley. Um, so I, I, think, I think the train of the questions coming in, though, is really very much about um, how local groups can join in. You know, is an NG, a national NGO considered to be an NGO? Does it have to be an international NGO in, or, in order to be uh, an NGO? And how, you know, how do you proactively reach out to those local organisations? I think, I think that seems to be very much the flavour of questions coming in. So perhaps um, we're just coming to the end of this um, session, running out of time, but perhaps, um, Susan, you just want to add something there. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, international NGOs only. Uh, uh, any, especially at the operational level. So you know, the SARG is at the top here. We're looking at strategic advisory, but you know, huge bulk of, of all that goes on is the country office operational level, and that is any entity that is engaging in that humanitarian response. And say humanitarian could be a development response um, at the country office level. And you see in the country office coordination groups, um, uh, NGOs from you know, somebody who's representing two bodies of an NGO all the way up to the larger scale. So in the country office engagement, there is absolutely no restriction on that. It's about uh, the partner engaging and getting that information as it does for all clusters. We, how do we, it's a difficult one to say, how do we encourage it? We do encourage it, um, but it is, it, and each country is different because, you know, a place like South Sudan, where there is a big um, logs cluster presentation be present because of the nature of the country, as opposed to some countries where perhaps there isn't a logs cluster deployment because the, the, it doesn't need it. Doesn't mean to say that they haven't got access to all of the facilities online through the cluster website, the LTA, all the good stuff that we do online is still accessible for all of those partners to access. And we, we try and spend a lot of time encouraging all of our national local entities to find that information as best they can, either in country through the group or using the online facilities and options and information that we have available. And we update it, it's updated regularly. Um, and we are looking more, you know, as we talked about localization, we'll be obviously looking more and more at how we can enhance that. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Sue, and thank you very much to uh, all, all the SAG uh, members who, who helped us uh, with that session just now, and we'll be hearing more from them 